G'day, Professor Joseph Drew. In this video, I will tell you the four questions you must ask and answer before you can decide if the consulting work you got was actually quality work or something you really shouldn't have paid for. I'd love this video to be watched by our state members of parliament and our federal members of parliament, but I would also like a lot of councillors to watch this video. And in fact, I was thinking about a recent conversation, telephone conversation I had with a counsellor when I decided to make it. There simply is no substitute for quality. If you're paying for mere opinion, mere thought bubbles, you're paying a lot of money for a poor foundation to make a really important decision. You must be, be presented with robust, rigorous facts if you're going to make good decisions for your community. So without further ado, here's the four questions. Question number one, who? Who is writing this report? I'm not interested in knowing whether it's KPG, MG, and Morrison, Lowe, PWC, whatever. That's not a person. They're not writing the report. They're entity. Who are the people writing the reports? What are their names? What are their qualifications? What is their experience? If they're scholars, do they have a good scholarly record? Do lots of people cite them? Who are these people? If you don't know who is writing your consulting report, it's like going to a brain surgeon to get an operation and never meeting the person, never knowing who he is, whether he actually has a degree from a university, whether he's ever done a brain surgery before. It's a really scary thing. But most of the consultant reports I see written for our regulators and ministers and councils, don't even bother to list the names of the people, let alone the qualifications of the people who wrote the report. That is a real concern. You're flying blind, you're trusting a company brand, and you've got no good reason to actually base that trust on. What, what are you getting? Are you just getting ABS statistics that you could have pulled off the website, the National Regional Profile, all by yourself? Are you just getting the financial data that the CFO handed the consulting company that they could have handed you directly? Are you just getting a couple of dodgy graphs that the average school child could have done? What are you getting? If you're getting things you could have done yourself, why are you paying for them? Or are you getting world's best practice, econometrics, full whole disposability analysis, order alpha, order M, SFA, really super complex, sophisticated maths that's going to give you good, robust, reliable decisions. Another thing I see all the time in this consulting work are business cases where they're not even done properly. The key component of business cases, you go back to Blaise Pascal's work which started this whole process, Pensies. The key component is to work out the uh, expected value, which is the probability times the payoff. I see payoffs everywhere, implausible payoffs, with no probability. The work's not even done correctly. What are you getting? Is this robust, good information that you can make good decisions on, or is this something the average school child could have done for you? Where? Where is the consultant? Not the brand, the actual person doing the work. Are they fronting up to you in your council meeting? Are they fronting up to your community and presenting this work? Are they fronting up to your staff? If they're not appearing in person, why aren't they appearing? Do they not believe their work? Do they not know the work thoroughly and they're worried about what questions they might have? Do they not stand behind the work? Where? Where are these people? Why? Why should you believe a word they've said? Is it mere opinion or is it facts? Is it based on sophisticated analysis? Is it based, is there lots of citations to the scholarly literature, to facts that have been assembled by the greatest minds in the history of academia over many, many years? Or is it just opinion? Is there a reference list? Is the scholarly literature a reference? You know, one of the interesting things with amalgamation literature is they don't reference anything from the scholarly world. It's as if all the professors around the world and all the other amalgamations around the world never happened. It was just the opinion of the commercial consulting companies. 
No names or qualifications of the people who had these opinions. The people will never know. They never fronted up. They never did any sophisticated, anything sophisticated. It was just guess and giggle business case stuff done with no probabilities, which is a basic error, a basic high school level error, and no references. No good reason for us to believe it. And yet our politicians did. That's why it's so important that if you can know an MP, a state or federal MP, you send them this video, you ask them, please ask yourself these questions. Who, what, where, and why? It's really, really important. Look, I bang on about the consulting work a lot, but it is rubbish, honestly. And we're making really bad decisions and they're hurting people across the countries. And the only people who are benefiting are the commercial consulting companies. And you really have to wonder why we keep paying top dollar for rubbish work particularly when there's better options. Sometimes the better option is to do it yourself. Sometimes the better option is to get people where you know who the person is, what their qualifications are, where they're prepared to turn up, and where they're prepared to give you good reasons, such as sophisticated empirical work or citations to the scholarly literature, for you to have a reasonable basis to believe them. Look, if you found this video helpful, please send it on to someone else. Please subscribe. And thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.